All right, Bang Bang, welcome to Dave Portnoy's show with Eddie and Company, presented by High Noon. Dave, back in Montauk, we had some High Noons this weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, I got I got loads and loads and loads and loads of High Noon. Like, people asking me how to get them, whatever, but yeah, no, I, I'm fully stocked on High Noon. It's the best, you know, it's the best seltzer out there. Um, so, High Noon all summer. They're actually flying High Noon banners over... Uh, Montauk, they should put my face on the banner. I mean, if they're being serious, like that would get the people going. Like they're already going when they see the banner, but my face on it would really get people going. And people go, oh, you're cocky. No, it would get people going. Just deal with it. It would get people going. What is the, uh, what'd you do with your stockpile in uh, Miami or Fort for Lauderdale? Uh, I just gave it to neighbors and shit. Oh, nice. That's a, that's a good little. But I'm, I'm reloaded. I have more. I have more. I don't have the tall boys here, but I have everything else. Nice. Uh, yeah, you were you were talking about those um, those banners. And then you saw High Noon. That was well. Yeah, I one flew over. That was I think Kendall Jenner's like eight eighteen tequila or something. And and you know it's one of the one of the issues I have. I live right on the water. Uh, I don't like you know I can see the ocean as far as you can see right here. Um, but that's where the banners fly over. So. I get I I get the tower buzzed quite a bit. I at first as I go, I, I don't know how cool that is to be like in a place like this. To, but then high noon classed it up, so I was cool with it. Nantucket, they don't fly those, huh? No, and granted, Nantucket's like in the middle of the ocean, so it's a little harder to get to, you know. Yeah, a little different. Um, all right then, go grab a high noon. How was the weekend in general? You, you good to be back there? Yeah, yeah, it's like getting the house. You know, I haven't been in a bit with a little bit of internet troubles. I, it, it's the first time, really, is the only house that I own, mine, currently, that it's like I was here last summer and not in. So it's just getting everything up and going. But yeah, it's good to be back. It was a busy weekend. It was, uh, but it was fun. Perfect weather. What's the update on the Miami house? I don't know. I could be dead before that thing's ready. I keep saying that. Hopefully, hopefully when the summer's over, it'll be ready, but who knows? It's just a fucking big project it's been. It's been a big project, yes. Do you uh do you, or do you regret the purchase? No. No. I mean, I'm not so, in it. So. Yeah. And you thought you'd be in it by now, right? No, but you not really. No, I knew it would be a disaster. I mean, it, it for a variety of reasons, building is a disaster and doing anything because covid delays so whatever tiny violin champagne problems right now yeah big time um congratulations on the celtics by the way big 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 i'm yeah. excited yeah Are you that was almost any- one of the all-time monumental collapses yeah that would have been uh i had to something. i had to yeah it, it, it i mean if jimmy butler hit that shot it just maybe the greatest collapse in the history of sports did he freeze? Right up there with like twenty eight three. Oh no. We're gonna deal we're gonna deal with this frozen shit all day. It's like I don't really understand. Like I, I, I don't understand. I, I make it pretty clear what I need and it just you know whatever. I'm gonna deal with internet issues all day. Has it been bad all weekend? Yeah, it's been pretty bad. Yeah. Um, what changed from last year? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That was great. They said I haven't. Been, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I need wired internet. The house has to be hardwired, so you're not dealing with wireless. If the wireless doesn't work, you plug in and you go. I don't. I don't know. Um, Pete probably just does. You know, Pete has has a long history of not caring about anything I do, so he probably just. I said I needed that, and I don't know. Like when we go to Podunk, West Virginia. There's no internet, but we get internet. That's what I need here. We got to act like the wireless is gravy. Like if the wireless is working great, that's a bonus. That's how this has to be treated. Hardwired. Is, uh, so Pete's in charge of all that. He's in charge. Of he the did help setup, me right? yeah, with the internet because the, 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 the internet in general is a disaster in the hand. I mean, I think they do that on purpose, but it's not good. There's tons of dead spots. There's bad with phone service. It's just bad internet. But I knew that good. I knew that going in. Yeah, your audio is good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I think so at least. Isn't he sounds better to me, right, Paul? Yeah. Um. But so, do you have any plans to go to uh, Golden State? What, what's What's the no, uh, final plan? No, for you? that that Hank and I were thinking about going to Miami for Game Seven. Um. 
we didn't have courtside seats. We got late. Like the guy who was getting to me, get, I asked, got like shit faced and got back to me pretty early on the day of the game. Um, and he had like third row center court, still great seats. But it was for me to get to Montauk to there. But we thought about, but Golden State's such a fucking, you know, it's such a grind to fly across the country, especially from here. Um, and I wouldn't be doing it private. So no, that's not much thought of it going there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've had how many uh, commercial flights so far this year? I feel a lot, like a lot. I'm back flying commercial like a loser, and it's the worst. And even when flying private, I've had delays. Uh, again, champagne brought, it, flying's just the worst. Yeah. Uh, but you will be going to the games in Boston. Uh, I would assume I'll, I'll end up at some of them. I, listen, this is where the guys like Paulie come out of the woodwork, except like <laughs> big Pauls, you know, like – everyone's asking for tickets now so i don't want to like you know i don't know that i'll go to all but i'm sure i'll go to one and maybe if they come back too but i i feel if they give them to me great but i understand like surreal when i went to uh with elio to the last game like we were just sitting next to like at halftime next to and there's not many people that i'll be like holy shit but it was David Ortiz and Pedro just right next to us. So, like, I get it. If Pedro's like, hey, I need tickets, Celtics, I would kick myself out. Like, Pedro gets tickets. So, the, every, the heavy hitters are going to start coming in because it's the fucking finals. Now, the Celtics have been so good to me. I, I like, they'll probably grant me, they'll, like, you've been going into games now for, like, 10 years. Like, the second we ask, you're like, yes. When I'm home for Thanksgiving, I go, whenever I'm home, I go. So, they, they realize that, and they've been super nice to me. And I get, it, a, I get a nice pop on the Jumbotron. Is it wood or die? Like, you won't go unless you're on the wood nowadays? It's tough not to be on the wood. <laughs> but I would go, like, center court. I, w- I don't like behind the hoop. I think it's a bad place to watch the game. I would rather be up in the middle than behind the hoop on the floor. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. But what no, about, they've I, been great. They've been absolutely great. I have like my two tickets. It's, it's, it's great. And I love going. It's, I've said it a million times. It's the best, one of the best perks. Maybe the other perk I got was uh, before that game, I called in Regina and I'm like, can you save? They don't save tables at Regina. It's like probably the most popular pizza place in Boston. And I was like, Elio, I want to try to go. And I, they just set a table aside for us. That, that, that one two punch, Regina Celtics, pff, big time. That's nice. Did they have TVG on? No, they didn't have Regina. It was packed. But no, I'm psyched, and I think the Celtics can win. So uh, I'm excited. I mean, there's nothing better than when your team's like in a run like this. No, that would be a good list. I, you know, it would be tough to do off the top of your head unless if you know people. Who would be? Who would you be okay with getting bumped for? You know, hmm. what if they're like, oh, Zolak wants tickets and we got to bump you? <laughs> no chance with Zolak. I mean, I love Zolak, but come on. Uh, you know, pa- yeah, I mean, you, you'd you have to ask. Like, Pedro Ortiz is there. Uh, you know, real. And then I wouldn't be okay with, like, fake fans. Like, if Ben Affleck or Matt Damon show up, no, that, that one doesn't sit as well to me. Um, uh, I mean, that's... Uh, uh, that's pretty big, Dave. They're big names, but they're not like when's the last time either of them have been seen in a Celtics game? Sure, but at the same time, they're still fans. Think Simmons will surface? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, they won't bump me for Simmons, but he's a real fan. Um oh, yeah. yeah, I bet he surfaces. Maybe. I don't know. I actually don't know. May- he may surface in Golden State. Doesn't he yeah. live in LA? Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. I, I it's a good question. I'd have to, somebody have to put a list in. For, I'm more partial to like Boston athletes. I guess is where it's like if you've you know put your time in. Like Teddy Bruschi needs a seat. Teddy Bruschi gets a seat. Like that type of shit. Yeah, like the legends. I mean, any any like Patriots Super Bowl winner, oh four Red Sox. Like, but uh, you're right. So like Bel Belichick, obviously. But there, there's that. Boston athletes pass, but like other fans, not so much. Mm-hmm. Celebrity fans. What about? Like I, I got This is gonna be one of the things that we get in the debates with. I think a crowd is gonna give me a like. They're more excited to see me than Affleck or Damon. Like I'm more Boston than they are. That's a good question. I think I am, because I think there is a 
kind of, and I've never met either of them. They're clearly Boston fans that root, but you don't hear much about them during the course of the season. No, but they're just so. You know who's there? Maria Menounos was there. She's a, a longtime Celtics. I hadn't seen her in the game, but I know when they were in like LA playing the Lakers, she showed up wearing Celtics. She actually, she went on the Jumbotron w- w- right before me and then waved to me after I went on. Oh, yeah. She's, a, she's always been around. Yeah. Yep. I mean, didn't fucking uh, F like he shut down the production of Gone Girl because they've tried to make him uh, wear a Yankees hat. I mean, he's they're pretty well documented as, you know, no one being known as Boston guys. So I think that's... Is that uh, true? That's, really, that's what that's how the legend tells it, that he shut down production for like two days because they were really? wearing a Yankees hat. Well, good yet. for him. I don't know. I mean, yes, yeah, sitting on the floor for a finals game is surreal. So I'm excited. I th- I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be sick. And if you uh, are looking for gonna, tickets... Who are you going to take? Uh, I think Hank is first in line. Um, Elio's bad luck. You're a joke. Um, Silvana kind of like hurt her chances a little bit by rooting for the heat. And like I had to leave rooms. I was watching the finals game and like her and one of her friends were annoying me so much. I had to like go watch the game somewhere else. So uh, her chances aren't great. Maybe either. Uh, I'd say Hank. Hank's Hank's in the driver's seat for the first game. I mean, if you don't take Sylvana, I'm sure that guy who bought her the forces is going to take her, so you <laughs> might have to. That was a wild move. <laughs> that was a crazy move. Uh, so I don't so, know what was crazy. He had the correct size. He knew my address. All a little bit nuts. I think he wanted a job, though, to be honest. Uh-huh. But. So for people that don't know, Sylvana was getting a little shit for her. Her Jordan, her, uh, Air Forces were a little... A little scuffed, I'd say. That's what people were saying, at least. And uh, this guy sent their new ones. <laughs> he didn't say. He dropped them off. Oh, that wasn't just like a mail. He just showed up? He dropped them off. Oh, wow. a, a, a dude pulled up in a car and dropped a pair of sneakers out front. We like saw him pull up. Like, who the fuck's this guy? Opened it. And it's like, since Dave won't buy you clean sneakers or something, here you go. A little, a little weird. That's just part of the game, I guess. But not. I mean, maybe, maybe I should have a gate. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's fucking Pete's fault. Pete should have put a gate up there. Yeah. Uh, um. Is she wearing them? Does she wear the shoes? Oh, she's excited. I, I shouldn't say she loves getting gifts. She's <laughs> like very excited. She's like a little kid when the mail comes. Like anything for me. It's like why would it be for you? And then two seconds later, a gift came for her. So. I did love your. Uh, Mr. Ice talking about the game <laughs> and he's talking about the blues. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was one of the like more ridiculous things I've been a part of. So I, I, and not to belabor the point, I, I love uh shout out Sully who, who from Citric guy, they, he's been the, his family early bar stool like people and they gave us perks before we deserved them or need them they've been like team bar stool for a long fucking time so i love the celtics um and he's my guy and he comes up it's elio and i were sitting there he's like who do you got what do you guys think about tonight's game elio's in a celtics jersey we're in like we're getting ready to walk into the court the place is 80 percent full going bonkers and elio looks at him dead serious he goes you mean the blues <laughs> this guy looked at him. to his credit he kept a straight face when he looked at Elio. he's like uh no the celtics elio after he said it i i rarely see elio like embarrassed but he knew he's like the second that came out he's like i i just i wish i could have eaten elio jimmy butler at one point was dribbling on elio's head and Elio didn't notice it because he was getting updates on the Blues game. Like, Mr. Ice is so deep in hockey, it's crazy. That's gambling, though. Like, part of that's like, all right, come on. But, like, you, when you're on a game, you, that's all you're focused on. There's no other game yeah. going on. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Even the one but, I mean, he's right. sitting courtside in a great, I mean, yeah. So he's out, though. No finals for Elio. It's, uh, he's it's out right. for two. Dude, we got to win these games. It's all right. I'll have good winners for the uh, conference finals for NHL. Um, if you are trying to go to the game, though, Dave, the best spot to go is the game, game time. Game time. Yeah, game time. All your ticket needs. Um, Sounds like that's what I'm going to be doing. There you go. Yeah, you won't get my invite. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> game time. Exclusive ticketing, parking of bars, sports. You got the NBA. play. Uh, play uh, NBA. We got a lot of, obviously, 
Barstool stuff going on. Celtics in the finals, Rangers uh, in the Eastern Conference finals. So if you need tickets, game time app, download it, official partner of Barstool Sports, 20% off your first purchase. Download the game time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code TPS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. $20 off, that is. Uh, yep. TPS. Go do it and uh, have fun at the finals. Um, I can't so wait. I'm excited. Plus 130. Uh, I've been flying around. I stopped in Jersey. I did have I had the Celtics to win the series, so that was good. Um, Elio's parlay. So, yeah, no, Celtics, I, I love it. I, again, very excited. And I, I think I think it's a coin toss. I think the, I think the Celtics are by far, by far, by far the toughest team that Golden State's faced yet. The, yeah. Sometimes they get a little weird down the stretch, as we saw. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's an intriguing matchup as an outsider, just being like you know Boston yeah. versus fucking. I mean the Goliath of the last decade. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Yep. Uh, you're uh, you're loving this Jack Peterson story, huh? Love, I, I DM'd him to try to get him on the show. He didn't get back to me. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's just something so pure about a fantasy baseball fight and the way he's handling it and talking about so nonchalantly. He looks like a bro. Um, this guy, Fam, he's a fucking lunatic. I mean, that you know, he fucking slugged him with that video. But yeah, waiver wire, big money, fantasy. It's such a guy story. Uh, and then when... Jock showed like the gift that he showed in like the group chat of like the Padres struggling. Yeah, it's very funny. It's made me a huge Jock Peterson fan. Now, is he is his like monotone and his like stoic behavior because he knows it's funny? I I don't know how much he is doing I, I, this on purpose. I, I think that I think he gets it. I that's my vibe on it. Like he can't be over the top, but I think he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> He, he has to because I, the way he's delivering it is like next level. I think he gets it. It's like so uninterested, but like he's giving every detail at the same Correct. time. Yeah. And it's and just, I think he realizes how ridiculous the details are. It's crazy because he could just be like, yeah, fantasy football, but no, three minute and a half, three and a half minute answers. Like, Waiver wires, guys yeah. on different leagues. When I first saw it, I, and I maybe it was a day late, and that's kind of Montauk time. When I first saw it, I thought it was fake. Like, I'm like, oh, this isn't a real story. He's having fun with the media. These guys are like buddies. And then when I realized it was real and continuing, all time story. There's certain stories I get where it's like, damn, I wish I was on the rundown um, because it's so funny. I want to talk about it in real time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the gif was that he used. So stupid. Was... <laughs> That's why it's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. It's harmless. Yeah. Harmless. Yeah. Um, crazy shit. So we'll see what happens. Uh, this this kind of went on on a... Um, there was a, a a capital unstructured capital account on Instagram. Yep, was posting something about you that you they overheard you in a conversation. Yeah, it went viral. Uh, a little bit viral depends. So very classic. It started. So I was at Surf Lodge on Saturday. That's like the place to be, I guess in in Montauk. Like, you know, if you're gonna see celebs in Montauk, you're gonna see them at Surf Lodge type place. Like the Brinkleys were there, and the, I've seen Bon Jovi there, and that it's just like kind of a list type stuff. But whatever, it's also like expensive, sort of. So somebody overheard; they didn't know who it was, being like, "Yeah, I, I didn't like my banker," like a sentence like that. And they posted it like, of course, you'd hear this. It was cliche. Like, of course, you go to Montauk and the first thing you hear is somebody complaining about their banker. Then they're like, that's Dave Portnoy. Other people like that's Dave Portnoy complaining about his banker. You can connect the dots and find out who our banker was when we did the deal with uh, Penn. I didn't say the name of the banker in that clip because I actually forgot it. Uh, and it was Silvana's video. So Silvana was just doing what she does making videos of herself and i was next to it and you could overhear um and they po put it there uh yeah i don't know that i've ever told this i probably have in different this story went down a kid came up to me two kids i don't like talking business at when i'm out i don't but whatever people come up nice enough dudes and he's like i was your banker for the um uh, pen deal and i think i'm like oh I wasn't too thrilled with the banker and he thought I was talking about him, but he said he worked for a company called rain. And I know who rain is 
because we met with Rain when we met with DraftKings before we did the pen deal. Like they were trying, uh, we were trying to, if I recall it, Rain took DraftKings public. I say shit that people are probably like, why is he talking about this? But Rain took DraftKings public. We had a dinner with Rain, DraftKings, and Barstool, primarily, I think, to see if Jason Robbins and I could get along um, and to see if there's a way to work together and do that. It didn't, it didn't come to fruition. Um, I think Jason and what's Mar- that, like, like summer of 2019, fall of 2019? Yeah, it was kind of before whatever, whenever the pen deal was done. It was probably six months before that. Okay. It was after gambling was legalized, but before a pen deal. So somewhere in there. Um, it didn't happen. I think Jason wanted to do it. I was willing to do it, even though I didn't understand going public and all that. Um, but it didn't come together. That was my experience with Rain. I had no problem with Rain. I didn't, from my perspective, didn't really work with Rain. So when he said he was with Rain, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I don't have a problem with you. I have a problem with our banker. And I think I wrote back that guy from Unstructured Capital because they said who the banker was. It was a company called Mollus, which has done a ton of deals in the gambling space. I think they did the Fox bet deal. Um, They've done a bunch. I think they're like the premier almost gambling company banker if you're trying to do acquisitions and whatnot. Um, Why I said that, and I said to him, like they stole from us metaphorically, like they didn't steal from us. And I'm probably a little naive or stubborn in the way that I view the world, but we hired the banker, Chernin did, hired Mollis to go find somebody who may be interested in buying Barstool when the gambling legislation passed. So they did set up meetings with DraftKings, FanDuel, Fox, Bet, Star, you name it. I've said this story many times. We met with every single gambling company and their son and did not get one offer. We didn't get one offer. Independent of Mollis, we got connected to Penn. So they had nothing to do with that. Um, and the Penn deal was basically done by Jay, myself, and I would say Erica. Like we all got along and we knew the deal was happening. And yeah, there were bankers perfectly involved, but anytime there was a hiccup, it's like, hey, Jay, get rid of this hiccup. Hey, Dave, get rid of this hiccup. It got done. And we actually kind of pushed aside the bankers. And I don't even think Chernin talked to Penn once. It was like Jay and I clicked. Erica and Jay clicked. We all clicked. And it's like, we're going to get this done. And let's not let outside influences get in the middle of the deal. We, Barstool, named the price. Had nothing to do with Mollus. We did. I was there. I heard the price. It's like, let's go for this. Penn said yes. There was no negotiation. Fine. Now, where I got a little angry... And again, this could just be Dave. You're an idiot. We pay, Mollus won the entire fee that you get as a banker for doing the deal. And for my thing, it's like they didn't do this deal. Like we, what, what we paid them to do, they didn't do. They didn't find us the buyer. And then it's almost like if you had a real estate agent and you found a house without the agent, but they still get paid because they showed you other houses. I guess that's how I would look at it. And again, people in the banker world may be like, tough luck, you signed it. We negotiate the fee back and forth. Where I really got mad is there were two guys involved with this, with Mollus. One of them I like very much and still respect. And the other one blamed everything on me why a deal wasn't done which may be also kind of true he's like dave's toxic nobody will deal with him it's like he's too aggressive like everyone's afraid of him he said this after the fact um and it's like well okay but you you couldn't get an offer for 100 million from anybody we got four and a half times that without dealing i didn't think we should have to pay the full fee i don't know what happened so that's the story I didn't mean to like throw anybody. I obviously I didn't know it was being recorded and I didn't even say the name until it was picked up by them, but that's a story. And I'm sure people on the banking side will be, yeah, that's the deal. They, they put together models. They did all, they did all the work. It just so happened. It didn't matter for what you did, but you hired them, you engaged them and that's the deal. So that is the banking story. And to be honest, I generally don't trust. I don't, I don't like, Bankers, I don't like real estate. I like a lot of stuff. I think people get fees when it's like, what are you getting the fee for? Yeah, I mean, that's a lot less juicy than I think people are expecting. It's a story. Yeah. I don't know if I've told that before. 
No, I, I mean, I, I found that interesting. That was pretty inside, uh, inside baseball there. Is it so, so, I mean, there was just no, uh, there was no reason for them at the end of the day. We would have gotten the deal done without them. Mm-hmm. Correct. But they did put in work and it's like, well, we yeah. put in all this work, you know, it, it, what we just did that for nothing and i do think we negotiated a different fee um but it was a shit ton of money all relative obviously but i'm like that's crazy like we they didn't they didn't find the and i didn't understand a little bit like how had we not been connected to pen was uh now was that a was there a conflict with like the turning guys about this afterwards like were you mad at them did you no 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 all of us we're on the same page, right? Like, because mm-hmm. Turn and still owed the company and we had to pay that fee. So nobody, everyone's like, whoa, that's a big fee to pay for somebody who didn't really do anything for the actual deal that got done. What was the fee? I forget what it is. Whatever standard banker's fee is, they get, yeah. like, I, I don't remember. I just remember hearing what it was. I mean, like, that's nuts. And then I think during the course of trying to negotiate it, one of the guys from Molus was like, well, Dave's an asshole. It's like the first time I heard it. Like during the whole thing, I never heard we're having trouble because of Dave. It was like after we got the deal done, it's like, well, we couldn't do it because of Dave. It's like, well, we did it because of Dave. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Again, it, it's probably for some, I'm not, we've talked about it a little bit and probably why not everyone likes me, but the people like me, I'm not in that world. Like, I'm not a banker. I'm not a finance. Like I started this little company and it grew and I, I'm not used to just, oh, fee there, fee there. I'm like, you earn your fucking money. That's what I'm used to. Has anyone on their end reached out being like, hey, why are you, why are you trashing us? No, I, I, no. No. I mean, again, I, the name, the, I, don't, I guess you can look it up. Like it, it was really kind of funny that it was caught on camera like that. And again, I don't know. The guy came up to me and he he just started the conversation. Obviously bad luck, but were you upset that it got caught? No. Uh, no, you didn't care? No, I don't know. I don't care. I Okay. It's very rare I'll say something in public or in a conversation that I wouldn't say to anybody. Very rare. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to say something like that to a stranger if I'm hiding it from the public. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's a story about the uh, the banking hot mic, I guess, if you want to say. Um, hey, is, uh, is is Rico there? I feel like we should bring Rico on. Let's. It's it's officially summer. Yeah, I'm uh, actually. I I'm surprised Paul is not in New York today. Isn't it intern day? Yeah, I did the orientation right before right before this. V- like virtually? Yeah. Well, a lot of they're not all interns are there mm. uh, a lot of them are virtually as well um and coming in but yeah no i i plan on being there next week got it yeah well that that make oh in new york needs to get it yeah um are we bringing a men cream yeah i'm trying to find him hold on all right cool let's uh let's talk about helix sleep while we wait for rico dave let's do it helix. um there you go no you go Okay. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else uh, with Helix? Uh, the best part about them is you take a quiz and then it kind of uh, formulates the mattress based on what you want, your body type and whatnot. So everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So that's why they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz and was matched with the... Uh, the Helix Plus, obviously, big guy. And uh, the mattress uh, that I wanted, it, it was something that, you know, it was like a, it was like a mix. It's a little firm, but it's got, it was soft, and it's a great spot to sleep on. So go to helixsleep.com slash Dave to take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Uh, 10-year warranty on them, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so it's a great night's sleep. 
and it's never far away. Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and a two free pillows for our listeners. It's helixsleep.com slash Dave. That's helixsleep.com slash Dave for up to two hundred dollars off and two free pillows. I love my Helix mattress. Very thankful that they uh, sent me one. It's been a, it's been a great perk. Yeah, and I, I'm in the market for pillows right now. I, I don't know if they changed, but I'm, I'm having my pillows here are too high. I have the beds; they're great. Um, I'm in the market for some pillows. All right, let's get some. Let's get Dave some pillows. Pete, write it down. Rico said he's doing hot ice. We go live in two minutes. What could I have possibly done wrong? Oh, and I uh, said I'm not sure Eddie wants you. Oh, all right, we'll do inside barstool. We'll see if he's done by then. Yeah, tell him to come in when he's done. All right, uh, inside barstool here. Uh, the big story of the last week is uh, Ben Mintz going at the Vandy Whistler. Loved it. Today's his birthday, too. Congratulations, King Mintz, King of the South. He also, that moment uh, that he had on uh, the dozen when he spit out an uh, answer, it wasn't his turn. And if you, I have a screenshot, and the screenshot is like, well, everyone has it, but Coley's like, no, and Robbie and, and Mintz just has a look at a camera like, nailed it. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was... It was great content. He's an annoying guy. There's two of them. He's, uh, you know, and it's it's his time. When I show up in Montauk, that means what? College baseball uh, is getting going. There's part of me, part of me, I just, the travel so much. He's, uh, Ole Miss is in Miami. I'd love to go to that with him. But, uh, that, that, like, to go there and then back, it's just a lot. But, yeah, it's Mincy's world, king of the south. That was... Uh... I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. That was that was some. <laughs> he was ready to go. King of the South. That was crazy. And then the uh, the prank calls from Big Cat and K were unbelievable. So, oh, I had like tears in my eyes laughing at those. So so funny. Very <laughs> very well done. Like that's Barstool in his prime right there. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the dozen, our match will have aired by now. So Jeff said we're okay to talk about it. That, Monster win. That's today. Yeah. Well, actually, I should say let me redo that. Uh, speaking of the dozen, uh, our match is aired by now. So if you uh, if you didn't watch it yet, fast forward two minutes because we're about to talk about spoilers. Dave Monster win over the Yak. Yeah, it was. We played well. Good game. Huge moment. Um, obviously, when uh, Jeff's partner in crime there didn't give the answer. We have that actually. If we want to splice that in, do you want to see it again? By the way, an unknown fact: when we showed, I, not unknown, I said it. Not many people in that great Clem poll, Clem VP. Um, when he pulled, I tipped my high noon like I was playing chess. I was like, we lost, like because we were behind. And then when he got it, it's so unbelievable. But yeah, a great match. And, and again, uh, the whole the whole tournament with the dozen is really. I, I said it last week. I'll say it again. Really proud of Jeff and what he's done with that franchise and a model for what we want like Barstool employees to do. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely great. And uh, we're fucking moving on. The only people who believed in ZD was ZD. So I, I listen, I said we were a problem from the jump. Yeah. So we got that clip cream. This was diabolical by Ken J. I love it. Yeah. I was trying to with shoes. shoes. 35 seconds of during the question. Name this 1998 movie based on three hints Denzel Cup, Little Bitch, and Real Big Fish. He knows it. I know the movie. Make you a moral, you're going to take a moral stand. Get some shoes. I truly don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, you got to take a moral stand. You, know, you, you, you fucked us in that. You cheat, basically cheated us out of the last game. We could yes. Do, we, should, we, should, we, should, we could owe you something. We, we could owe you something. How about we all go something? Ken Jack, I'll take your Would you like a nice O? Take a moral stand. I think I'm going to say a hearty. The movie's called Get Fucked. Oh, Ken Jack, you've made a terribly powerful enemy today. He's dead. I have, I have, I have a guess. He's dead. He's dead. I have a legitimate guess. He's dead. All right, yeah, I mean, we got his guess. No one's ever done it. That was the first time we've ever seen it. I, for a minute, thought that was the name of the movie. That was bullshit. All right, you have 10 seconds. His timer's up 10 seconds. I think it might be best in show. That's I don't think it is, dog, but maybe right? we could change our guest to but Ken Jack is the biggest loser of yeah. all time. Maybe something but, along those lines. Little bitch is a dog. Denzel right. five. Let's, no, it's not. Let's do no. Best in show. no, it's not that at all. Didn't you just say you hated Best in Show yesterday? Yeah. So it's, like, it's like a team movie. It's like a just team watch movie. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so how could you think it was that? Dave, Dave, no, it's I didn't watch it yesterday. yesterday. It's like a teen movie. It's five. I thought you told me ten. I don't have it. Ten things about you or something like that. Two. But that's too early. It's not ten things about you. Ten things about you. It's basketball. 
Ah. Mm. Oh. Overshadowed, by the way, in that clip is Steve Che being like, I think I have it. I have a legitimate guess. And he had no idea. And he just watched the movie. I don't know what he's talking about. I talked about it after. He just is like, he just because bitch is like a word for like a dog. He's thought he had it. He did not have it. He had a wild guess. But yeah, and unbelievable he, moment. He was completely unaffected by him saying get fucked. Totally. Like he was just like, if, all right, yeah, let's just get back in the lab. <laughs> and that's the first time I saw that. You can tell I react like a beat late because I'm like, oh, that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of movies, saw, cow, Top Gun, saw Top Gun oh, last night. What'd you think? Loved it. It fucking smashed this biggest opening weekend. Ever. Yeah, I loved it. it. It makes me feel old as fuck. It's like sentimental. It's kind of crazy because like I saw it when it came out. It's like one of my favorite movies ever. Top 10 probably. So to see like, you know, people old is just, I mean, I am old, but it, it's, it's shocking. It's funny because Silvana. what? Sorry, go. It's like also uh, Jennifer Conley. I told, I went with Sylvana. I'm like, hey, I, I used to have like a fat crush on her. And she's like, really? And then I showed her, I'm like, yeah, she was huge. I showed her the clip, the rocking horse clip, which is like all time. Um, and she's like, that's so disrespectful that that's how you know her. <laughs> all time <laughs> clip. The rocking horse, <laughs> Jennifer Conley. What is that mo movie called? Col oh, uh business money i don't know you know what i'm talking about right i actually don't oh my god jennifer connelly rocking career opportunities yes career opportunities maybe it dates it's right up there with what's her face walking out uh the pool in um fast, fast times. times at Richmond high it's like yeah. that iconic of a clip for me phoebe cates no oh. uh that did, did, did Silvana like it she did she i made her watch uh the original before what did she think of the original? She liked it. I I, uh, I have a couple clips of her like uh, on her phone in it, which I didn't love. Like um, when you watch a movie, I expect you to watch a movie. I don't like people falling asleep in movies. I don't really talk in movies. Uh, I eat popcorn and like concentrate on the movies. But I mean, it's a great series. They did a great job with it. Uh, it was the perfect amount to throw back, you know, um, and I won't give away spoilers, but I, I haven't been like excited to go to a movie in a long ass time, and I heard all, everybody being like, "It's great," so I was super excited, and it was. I, I loved it. I'll, I'll for sure watch it like ten more times. Because I, I watched the first one actually like a couple months ago for the first time, and I, yeah, first time I was just like, I need to watch this before I. You'd see never the seen Top Gun? Had never seen it. No, I guess time. that's where things get like aged. Like I, I mean, I had the video game. I had like. Top Gun is, yeah, it's a, it's, it's just it was huge, iconic for me. I mean, yeah, I've yeah. used, we've done shirts, I've done Iceman. I mean, to see Val Kilmer, I, is Val Kilmer still alive? Yeah, he is. Um, mm -hmm. I thought he was sick. I don't know if I'm confusing him with somebody else, but he is, he is sick, I believe. But he is. I, uh, like to see him old, and even to think. Well, never mind. I won't give away. I don't want to do spoilers. Um, but I, I watched it, and I was like, oh, all right, like I. I it was a classic 80s movie. It was fine, but I, but people, I didn't realize people don't say it's like a great movie. It's just like a, it's like a nostalgic, like great 80s movie. I mean, I, I, I think it's a great movie. I know like Rotten Tomatoes has it in the 50s for critics and 80s for audience. This new one, I think is 98, 99. So they're saying this one's better, but I mean, it's a great movie. Great, great, great movie to me. Uh, and not to do too many Silvana lines, but <laughs> she's like, I love movies that are in olden times. It's like, what? It's like, no, that's just like Stranger Things is in older times. This is, yeah. this was just when it was made. Like, then I'm olden times because that's, but I love it. I mean, I loved it. I truly loved it. Like the music, just, I love it. I mean, even when I, I got to get back to DDTG at some point, but Into the Danger Zone is like a core song of what I do there. Yeah. Uh, it's a big doesn't make me feel too. old did make me feel old in a lot of ways but well good I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it it's a big movie month there's a lot of good shit coming out did you see did you see jurassic world or are you the only uh uh i'm not nearly as into that series i i saw the first one obviously maybe the, i don't know how many there are I, I don't even know i've seen any but the first the second one was really bad so that may be what turned me off. Like, I, honestly, if I heard Top Gun was horrible, 
I don't know that I would have gone because I don't want to like, ruin it. Like, I still haven't seen the remake of Point Break because I heard it's like the one of the worst movies ever made. Uh, yeah. And I, I love, love, love the original Point Break. Mm-hmm. That's like, like that. They, you, right? they, well, Swayze's dead. I was going to say they should have. Uh, recast it. No, why? Well, they could have done like something similar where he gets out of jail or something, but he's, he's dead. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, I'm glad he liked it. Uh, did you see Frank the Tank? He got hacked. No, I didn't. Yeah, he um, Gaz, I'll let you take over. The social guy, he felt he got duped. Yeah, you. I'm surprised you didn't see this one, Dave. It was like uh, he basically someone asked him for to, <laughs> to, to what was it to donate or like to sign send over his information. Mm-hmm. Come on, who picks yeah, on the you tank? Have, you have a screenshot of it. Who it's picks on the tank? Did he get it back? Yeah, I got, I got it back in like 24 hours, but the email, the guy, the guy, the guy was just like, can you get, send me your information? And he just. Well, it was Tim Brando, the like uh, college yeah. announcer guy, but. Tim Brando. Yeah. So. But he not, the real, t- not, not yeah, the real, not the real. Yeah. yeah. S- someone hacked, like verified Tim Brando. And then it's like a chain reaction. Like he sent it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Time is not I guess the Tim Brando thing. It's like that almost as <laughs> that's almost seems like a uh, precision attack on Hank to send on, on the tank to send a Tim Brando <laughs> thing. Like how many people are going to be like, oh, Tim Brando. But that's probably like a core guy to the tank. Yeah, so he's back though. Thankfully, Good. he 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 did think it, he did think at one point that I was going to curse the Mets. So I guess we're okay. Imagine if he didn't get back. Uh, the hell hath no fury like a hacked Hank. I mean, why do you keep saying Hank Frank? Take him off social media. Yeah, that would have been been heated. Um, also, uh, shout out to Jersey Jerry. He's got a uh, podcast dropping with Tracy Morgan. I think that's I saw awesome. that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So About like uh, great guest, great get. Hmm. Uh, I was taking a lot of shit. I don't know if you if you saw it. Uh, I, I missed a, a dog interaction. We had a billboard release. <sighs> Did I see it? I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> I, 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 I retweeted, uh, I never saw a dog. I don't think there was a dog there or something in that effect where the dog was like literally all over you. You're not a dog guy. That's fine. Some guys aren't dogs. Sylvana did say you texted saying you may need some help from like Brody. I was getting killed. I was well, getting you're not a dog pummeled. guy. I mean, how do you not know the dog? What Like what? Do you understand what happened, though? You were so, looking at a sign or something, but the dog was pouncing on you. So Muggsy put a billboard up of us in Chicago, and it's a one shot. It's a one of one shot. You know, just, you see it, and you need a reaction. And I just like there was like I just knew that I had one take, and then I didn't. I don't know. I just missed some guys the dog, aren't dog guys. Makes you think, but yes, but, uh, you the do thing, a show though. called the Dog Walk, but not dog guy. There's nothing you can say that's gonna clear your name here. Uh, listen, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a good, it wasn't a bad look. It was a bad look. I agree, but at the same time, I'm, I'm just saying that you know, I, dog I, was, I also that dog was straight out of Central Casting too. Yes, I think we have contact. We have made contact with the dog, and I'm going to make it right. So that's that's all there is to it. Well, I'll I'll find the dog, and I uh, needed Brody's backup for sure. Um, what do you think of this, uh, Stephen Shea? He he said he falls asleep in a hundred percent of his haircuts. Do you think that's normal? There's nothing about that dude that's normal. But he did will himself into a content job without anybody actually approving it, so good fam. What do you mean? I He just congratulated himself. He's like, Congratu- I, yep, so I'll break the news. I'm in content now, and I, it's like he just got the ball move. It's like he, I don't even know who said yes to that. He kept asking me. I kept being like, no, no, we got to check, check. Next thing you know, he's in content. I thought you guys had like pretty much signed in – no. Close to sealed it in February at the Super Bowl. No, that's just no. not true. I'm like, we'll see no. how you do in NBA. Oh, he just wow. bulldogged his way to it. So congratulations. No, but not, nothing's normal about Steve Che. Nothing. So are you okay with him being full-time yeah, content? Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I, I like him. I don't want to lose him. He didn't want to do the other thing. He's a weird, crazy, arrogant, delusional human, and those guys I like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all right, Steve Che. Congrats. Uh, your uh, your guy Dave Blatman Scorsese. He was promoted to senior director, head of production. Good, deserves it. So you're talented, in on, uh... talented, and is barstool. Those sometimes maybe will fight a little too much online, but it's all in the name of the brand. I love Steve. Hi, right, Steve. My names. I took some Adderall. It's not kicking in. I'm all Dave Blatman, Team Blatman. 
Oh, nice. That was that was nice too. I, I thought we we're gonna get. No, Scorsese. I listen. He he's he's earned it. Yeah, I agree. Shout out to him. Uh, and then my last thing here, if if you see the large head, that video with brought his kids to work was very funny. Very funny. Yeah. Good video. Shout Rico out, being man. sort of self aware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Let's try to get Rico again. Let's Can I ask one question? I saw this. Someone sent yeah. it to me. Yeah. And it's more, yeah, what was, what was Bubbly Gang talking about? I was wondering if this was going to come up. Cause I did was, you see I was, this, Eddie? I did. I did. Well, so why yeah. did you bring it up? I, I just don't know how many times we're going to do that. Like, whole but the, I hadn't show. seen, I, this was a new theory that I had never seen before. The, 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 the tweet say something, and I think it's still up, so he must still think it, but Bubbly essentially said, everybody knows the the bubbly company was a fake company in a way to get old barstool employees equity in barstool i don't even know what that means so i saw those those tweets going up and i know he's in monaco for a grand prix and i'm looking at the math and i'm like it's 2 a.m so like this is not good i texted him in our group chat i said hey we probably shouldn't be tweeting right now like you're obviously been out or whatever he fought, he quit, came back and he's like, listen, I, I'm not, I, I don't necessarily believe that, but I, I actually went into it with him and I was like, you're, I'm in a position now where like, I'm getting very uncomfortable with having to answer. Like I, everyone probably thinks like, well, how is Gaz still? Yeah. I think a lot of people think that a hundred percent. And it's been what, five years since that's all happened. And we've had a couple of blowups recently where I've had to like, really think about it, like being like, can I continue this? Like. But what is he, what, what, what is he talking about? Okay. And, and again, I don't want to speak. He wants to like, come on. He said last night, he wanted to like, come on and like debate you on all this shit, which I don't know if you're interested in doing that. People love um, that. Huh? People love it. Yeah. I, I don't even know if he, he would, he said he would do it last night, but again, we'll see what, how it is today. Well, the stipulation was that it was them two in a room, nobody else. And the camera had to be rolling the whole time. No edits. Like, just, like, no matter what's set. Like, he doesn't want to do it through Zoom. Like, he doesn't want to just come on the show. He wants to, like, be, like, sit down in a room with you. That was his stipulation. I have to tweet, I think. So, I, I again, I, mean, I can give you what he said to me about the whole Rosé thing, where he says that people that were in the company that did not get equity at the time were looking for ways to make money. And so he built this Rosé company in order to appease some of those people. And that's his his theory on it, whether that's true or not. I, I'm not involved. I wasn't involved in Rosé. I didn't have nothing. I didn't know anything about it. I, I don't, I don't know, but he, he gets upset because we in this podcast will bring up the bubbly gang and how he uh, stole code. And that's what everyone says. And then he has to answer for that with everything he's building for the last five years. And he does not believe that he had anything to do with stealing the code. Um, the Rosé thing, he fucked up and he admits that. Uh, but the code thing was not a him thing. And it's, I tell him not to fight with Twitter eggs and he sometimes can't control himself. And now I, have I mean, to the only reason I don't even, he, I block, he's blocked. Like just yeah. because I don't want to talk, like I've told him last night, it's like, I don't want to talk about, it, but if you talk about it, it comes up here, the code, but I mean, I guess we could sit in a room, but I I've said this. First of all, I don't understand what he means on any of that, on the people who didn't have, like, who's he talking about? Fluffy, the the T-shirt guy and Jeff Hunter? Like, Pat McAfee? What, Pat McAfee, equity. Like, Pat McAfee wasn't even there a year. So I don't know what he's talking about that. There's so much more. I don't think sitting down in a room would benefit him at all, um, but it would be good views. Uh, I saw McAfee's website. That in the two admins on it were him and Jeff Hunter. I mean, I saw it like my eyes. I saw it. So I, I don't know how we can say is nothing. When we're talking about the code, we're talking about that website. So I don't know in what world you can say he had nothing to do with it when you were an admin on that website. What do you, what do you, you think? Do it. What do you think about? my like me being in the middle of this like do you think i'm like i looked at poorly because of 
Like I mean, I, I listen, I, 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 I'm 44. I, people say five, but I feel like I'm 44 still. Uh, you know, we were friends with him for a long time. I handle things differently. I think you're in an awkward position because it keeps he keeps popping off. Uh, and then it, it still gets talked about. It's a tough spot to be in. And, and I mean, my feelings have cooled a little bit. It's a little bit weird. We'll probably see each other a lot. No, I don't know. I, a little bit. It's a weird spot. It's a tough spot. I mean, I handle things differently. Um, you know, again, I don't... I've said this before. I don't know that he did it maliciously or anything. It's like he just gets going and does stuff. But, like, that fake... Comp like... The fact of the matter is he was, he, he, he was trying to sabotage Erica... He was trying to sabotage Deirdre. He created an old company down there. Like, you know, that's a fact. He tried, like, that's what he did. So I don't understand, like, keeping people happy. Like, what what he just said is lunacy. Like, my it was my job to keep, like, Jeff Hunter happy. I knew Jeff Hunter 14 years or however long. He never, I haven't talked to him since, but, and who, Chip? Like, I don't even know who else was involved. Like, to keep Chip's as Chip was here for a cup of coffee. Like, what are we talking about? Like, the, the bottom line is, if you gave Bubbly $100, he's going to want 200 He gave him 200 he wants 400 He wants 400 he wants 1000 He wanted to get uber rich. He wanted to get uber rich. And that's what he wanted, and he was looking to ways to do it. And if it didn't happen fast enough, he went so far outside the box and created this thing. But to keep, like, people happy, what, like, I, what is he talking about? That is lunacy. That is a lunacy tweet that I saw like that. I've never heard him say it's a fake company. Yeah, I, I think know. you should we, do we it. Weren't, we weren't involved in the converse. I got, we weren't part of that. So, so under, under that illusion, if, if the Rose company took off, all those people are making all this money would still work at Barcel hard because they're making a shit ton. What make no sense. Probably not. Probably not. No, you probably quit Barcel and then all our second floor would have been gone. Like what do you, like, it doesn't make any sense. What do you so, think, Eddie? I mean, I, that's why I didn't bring it up, because like I said, and, and it just seems like he, and like you said, it was 2 a.m., I, I assumed the same thing. And the same thing, like, what was it, last month with the screenshots and how he was going to post that, and you told him not to do it? I don't know. It just kind of seems like this is a continual thing that happens. So I was like, I don't know how many times we're going to go around and around about this. So I'd never think, seen anything quite like that particular one that was sent that it was like a fake company designed to keep barstool employees like who didn't have equity like who are we talking about who did the only like person really that i can think of and i've had it like a conversation was maybe feidelberg who was early um early in barstool didn't get equity in the move but if we're being honest at the time i told feidelberg like he didn't even have to fucking come to new york like i wasn't convinced he was a fit and like there wasn't a lot more people got equity with the pen thing. Like, there wasn't all this equity just to be throwing around. I gave away a lot. Like, I don't know. And Lewis, by the way, was making a shit ton. What was, um, what did he, was there ever a conversation with him where he thought he deserved equity? Oh, yeah. He wanted, like, every fucking day. Yeah. He wants so to be a billionaire. Like, that's why he, he's... He, Bubbly is all, was always going to make a lot of money in his life because he's obsessed with it. Like that's, he, he's obsessed with it. That's all he cares about. It was from like the day one we met him and I got along like him. But again, it, it, it when it came in direct conflict to like what we're doing, it's a major problem. And I was kind of stunned the way he went about it. Again, I've said a million times, I knew about the company. I've never said I didn't know about it. He wanted me in it, and I said no. It's like, no. He begged me to put money in. I'm like, no, it's not. And I said he could do it. I'm like, do it. You just can't do it like in Barstool hours. You have a job, like do it off. And But he, he basically took that whole second floor and made the company. That's what happened. So I, if he wants to have a conversation about it, I guess I'd be open to it. It, it, it would, I mean, I don't know. It just reiterate all the stuff. I think he'd come across as a loon, but he is a loon. Yeah, I mean, I think you should do it. Because it, it, why let him explain everything with more context, not just Twitter, you know, whatever, how many characters. I think you should do it.
There's the tweets. I didn't see any of those. I just saw the first. Here, here. Let put them up, and I'll go in the room. Like, You're a big room guy. Yeah, I am. Bubbly Gang stole the code. Fact. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, okay, so to, 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 to say that, would he say Jeff Hunter stole the code, not me? But he's like, I don't know how to, he'd probably say, I don't know how to fucking steal code. Like, how would he, he's not an internet, like, he's not like, okay, all right, guy. fine, fine. If he says that, and the answer is, well, Jeff Code, Jeff Hunter, who built our website and who had equity in Bubbly Gang, I use Bubbly Gang as like Bubbly Gang, and yeah. Jeff Hunter had equity in Bubbly Gang, and they launched a, a website that used our exact code, and the two admins on that site were Jeff Hunter and and Lewis Roberts, would you say he stole the code if he didn't press the button? Like, based on that evidence, I would say yes, he stole the code. So you're, you were aware of it and you were partnered with someone who did it. So you're guilty by like you, if you killed someone and I was your driver, <laughs> like type of person, I'm he, guilty. He was the admin on the site. That's beyond dispute. I saw it. So put those back up. That's one. Now he, he's going to say, I didn't do, I, I don't know how to steal code and I'll go do in a room with him. Um, ruin the McAfee relationship. I a hundred percent believe this. He was in charge of McAfee. Uh, and as he was doing, can't trust Erica. Can't trust Deirdre. Like Paul, was he saying this stuff? Like he says it. He says the way he thinks. He's a. He, we know what Lewis like. He's a. He's a crazy person. Has he? He wears his heart on his sleeve. Will say things. He'll say fuck this person. Fuck that person. That wears on a culture in a second floor type thing. I could see that happening where he's in Indianapolis and it's like, oh, Eric is this. Eric is that. And then Pat hears it and it, I could or Deirdre or whoever it may have been. He will sling it and say whatever his opinion is. Is his opinion right all the time? No. So that that could be construed as ruining the relationship. Also, here is a absolute fact. The way when he left, it was like it was basically presented as spur of the moment. McAfee was mad with the business side, thought he was getting fucked and made a snap decision and we had one of the biggest podcast advertisers call me and say hey dave i respect you and i just want to let you know i was presented in advertising like like sheet like rates and stuff weeks before any of this went down by lewis so that was told unsolicited to me which you'd have to believe okay next by the way let me say this about pat he was always going to do his own thing like that He's a superstar. He's shown he's a superstar. He was always going to do his own thing. It was an inherent conflict of interest, the way our relationship was signed up with him. But he was a superstar. He, he went to Barcelona and learned. So do I think, Mac, do I think Bubbly uh, escalated maybe the time frame? Sure. Do, but was it inevitable? Yes. Do you think that what you just said was like, Pat, you knew it was inevitable? Lewis was inevitably going to hang himself with how much rope he got. Yeah, I, well, I didn't think he would okay, in the right. way versus like us. Like he, he created a, uh, uh, again, I've told this story, but when Bubbly launched, Churnit called me. They're like, we got a rosé. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, I had no idea any of that was going on. But he always did things to push, like they totally. feel like when you wanted a totally. red like, he would. But do that was better. correct. But that was barstool like i could deal with like that was like he was doing it what he thought was in the best interest of barstool that there's no despite that tweet there's no way he thought that was in the best interest of barstool all right next no no next tweets i want to see all the claims all right i guess that's it fuck business insider that's true yeah, he yeah he he's mentioned that he said he'd wear a wire for me. <laughs> They've reached out to him a bunch to like speak, and he's never done it. I'm time. sure. I'm sure the other one is going to reach out to him too. I mean, I, they're different like disputes, kind of like one's a business thing, which, and one's something else. But so you're going to reconcile with him? I don't really. It, it's like when we go back through what happened. Yeah, it's like I re be like, oh, that's pretty bad shit. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, he's asked me like, obviously in a friend, like, how can I like, and, and I don't think any of this stuff helps it. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe they end up talking and like, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't think it helps it because it's like uh, occasionally I'll stop really thinking about the details. And again, he was one of my really good friends, but then I see the details and I don't like, I don't ever from what I get from it is that there's not a whole ton of like accountability to what actually happened. And that's hard for me to forgive if and forget if I don't think there's any accountability. Yeah. Well, we'll see, Paul. You're going to be there with him, right? So we could set this up. Yeah, I'm probably going to fucking run into like. Yeah, so you might as well set it up. You might as well just try to get, have the conversation before. Right. It's an uncomfortable. I mean, it's uncomfortable. It's like you you have a Dave who has given me my life. And then you have I a guy gave him his I, life, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's off and running because of everything that you've done. And I was living with him when everything went down. I was living with him in Feidelberg and we had like leases. It wasn't like a, an exit thing. Like, I don't know. And then your friends and it just gets me. I like to just not in, like I just keep it separate, like church and state. Yeah. And Dave is Dave and, and I'm different. I don't like to be in conflict with people. I wouldn't even say I'm in conflict. It's like I don't outside of when he shoots those off and I see it. It's like what? It's like I, everybody knew it was a fake company. What does that mean? I think they thought that company was going to be a huge success. Devness Nate, I think he ordered a 365 pack, didn't he, Paul? I think so. Um, I, uh, I'll yeah. say this. Again, I've said, when I talked to McAfee, he's like, you don't know about this? Like, and again, I knew, I did I know, I didn't know it was launching. I knew Lewis was trying to do it. Did I know McAfee was in it? No. Did I know Chip was in it? No. Did I know Jeff Hunter was in it? No. Did I know the second floor was working on it? No. Did I know it was going to launch? No. Did I know they're going to use all marketing, Barstool's marketing to launch it? No. Did I know that Lewis wanted to try his own thing? Yes. I told him, go for it. He was like, just don't interfere it with Barstool. So yeah, I think I think the the fans would like the content. I think Lewis obviously yeah, be would good. like to have the conversation. Let's do it. And let's set it up. Um. Let's talk about ZipRecruiter, Dave, and let's bring uh, Rico Bosco on. ZipRecruiter, if you own a growing business, need to hire, ZipRecruiter makes hiring so much easier because they do the work for you. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that make it easier to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate with the first day. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site based on G2 satisfactions rating as of January 1st, 2022. In fact, the hardest thing you have to do is to remember a special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. That's where you got to go to ZipRecruiter for free. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. What's up? Rico. What's going on? I have no idea why I'm here. Um, How was the weekend to everybody? Hello? (laughs) Nobody even says hello. Rico, what's up? How are you? What's up, Eddie? What's going on? Usually this I, is bad. I, I, why, why are you in such a bad news? I have no idea why you're here, so I don't know what you're so mad about. I'm not mad. Just nobody says hello. Well, you. What? You didn't say hello. Say hello. We talk, we now talk, I'm not going to. We talked about this. Guys, yeah, how right. are you doing? I, I, I talked about this. I don't care what you think. So uh, I'm, not in the, I'm not in the Coddle Rico business. I didn't ask you to be on here. Oh Eddie, what do you got? Nothing. Honestly, I just wanted you to come on. Memorial Day obviously means the start of summer. I wanted to see where we're at in the summer squeeze situation. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm off Mount Rydamore, but I'm doing, you know, we're doing things. It's the summer. It's less of a summer squeeze out. I'm here. That was when you were still, like, you know, dangling full time or, like, making sure Pickham was good. Like, I'm all right. Good. That's good then, Dave. Dave, you feel the same way? Is there any uh, animosity towards Rico at the moment or no? No, I don't have any animosity towards Rico. How was uh, how was DJ's this weekend? Not the same. Unretired for like an hour. Too old. I think it's. I think that was the last one. It's not Rico, the same. I didn't, I, Rico, I didn't go out one night in Fagawa. I know. I, 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 think I, I think I hung on for one, one, year, too, one year too long. Yeah. No, we were at uh, Louis DeVito and Reyna at, at the Asbury Park concert, and then we went for an hour. 
So it's just it's not the same. Louis DeVito, that's all you said. Didn't you at one point yeah, say yeah. he's bigger than Tiesto? I didn't say he was bigger. I mixed them up. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of like 35, which I am at, to like 42-year-old people like reliving their, their glory days. You had the guys with the Armani button-ups. It was a crew. Louis was locked in. So he still wants to talk to you, but, you know, I know you're busy. But uh, How was Fagawi, Paul? Uh, it was very different. It's It was more low-key. The race wasn't going on. Straight Wharf is not a thing. Straight, like it's a restaurant. They don't do any like party there anymore. The box was the way the box was. Ran into Chase Winovich. Mac Jones was at nice. Cisco. Uh, Hunter Henry was there. Like Yeah, they, they were all up. together. Hunter, yeah, Hunter, all Hunter Henry looks like an accountant, if you didn't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> a tall accountant. Dude. Yeah, tall. He's like 6'6". Six, six. Um, but no, it was, it was more like a normal... Fourth of July, like not the crazy all day hmm. drinking party shit that it was in the years past. Rico, what, what what's up with Louis Devito? You want to meet with him, Dave? You don't no interest? No, I forget even how that came out. It was, uh, yeah, I don't know. We were talking about something, DJs and different like guys who DJ, and I was like, oh, you know Tiesto, and uh, I mixed up the names. I fucked it up. He thought Tiesto. Louis, was Louis, than big though. Underground, Louis, underground is fucking sick. Louis's music can. There's, there's a anybody. clip. There, there's a clip out there of him saying Louis DeVito is bigger than Tiesto. Yeah. That's I didn't agree with that. Louis said he had an idea. He's like, hey, can you get me in touch with Dave? I say the same thing. Like, ah, you know, it's tough. I, I don't really give out his number like that. That's right. Not, right. It's not and how it works. Those privileges are long gone. What's that? Like connecting me to people. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be working at Arrow Pastel in a fucking year. So. You know, at where Arrow Pastel clothing store when they turn, know. they're going to turn this into a shopping mall. So it's all right. Arrow Pastel. I'm, listen, I'm in a total different mindset. Like I said, I saw my life. You seem like you're doing good. Yeah, I, I, I saw I, my I'm, life I'm, flash yeah. before my eyes in February. I'm just going to ride it out. Dan's deleting my number. You're in Miami. I just pray that like. If you do see me, don't like just at least say hello. Like when you know when I don't have a life and I'm driving Uber and stuff like that. If I do see you somewhere, at least give the heads up. Like, oh yeah, we used to know each other. Don't don't do the ships in the night. That'll break me. Yeah. All right. Why did he lose that privilege where he can't put you in a business? Oh, plan? that's that's a ride more privilege. Right. Oh. Like they're like not everyone at that's again not a direct attack on Rico at all. Because there's a lot of people who don't, like, you know, I'm not, like, there's a lot of employees here who don't have that. Yeah, I can't give you that number. Like, that's not an attack on him. And I'm not mad at him. Rico, do you have aspirations of being back on Would you Are you trying to get back or are you just like, oh, like, don't care? No, obviously you would like to be back. But, I mean, I, I don't know. The whole thing, like, I, Hank's quote was, I just wanted to go away. Like, I, and Dave has, ever, Dave has the ability to put pressure on somebody. Like, I don't have the pressure to, like, say, oh, I'm never doing something. I don't know. I wanted to just let everything kind of shake out and not just try to fucking get through it. Obviously, there's definitely wrong what was done, and Hank's my guy, but it's like, I don't know. You want to – like, the guy just had two of the worst days of his life, like, pile on and say, you're off of this, I'm doing – like, I just kind of, like, let it go a little bit, and then, you know, we're figuring it all out, like, where it – Because you I, – I will say this about Rico. He is a big, like, bygones be bygones guy. Like he he does not hold grudges, lets things go, brushes off. So I get that. That's that's typical behavior from you him. Did send me to uh, could be your fault for trying to reform me. I mean, well, I've seen some of your. I don't know. I've seen some of your tweets the last couple of days. They don't seem overly like reformed. I've seen some profanity laced attacks on people. I feel like no. Uh yeah. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. So I don't know. You just complimented him, though, that he showed some funny self-awareness in Large's video. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I was surprised. Again, I'm not mad at Rico. And I'm not holding any... Right now, That the incident happened, and, and I haven't really mentioned it or talked about it. And it. It is what it is at this point, and we try to move on. That's kind of the, the what I was trying to play it as. Like, you know, all right, let's try to get away from this as fast as possible. Yeah, right. But the battle is still raging. Right. But that, yeah. At that time. So. Right. To be Whatever. honest, headed into June, this is like the most upbeat I've seen you, Rico. It seems like you're doing well. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm doing really well. Doesn't like the interns, uh, though. The new ones. Oh, yeah. That's true. 
I, yeah, I saw you. Yeah, I saw I would, that. I, right, saw right. take I wouldn't say I, I don't like the interns. The the scenario you want the exact scenario. Jack yes. is talking about how there's interns. Jack McGuire, uh, McGuire, who lied about when he got hired, said he got hired, started on on Memorial Day. Liar. Um, but we, uh, I walk in. I know there are interns. I'm like, hey, who's got a pick? Group of people. Who's got a pick? Nobody says anything. I'm like, guys, nothing. Nobody's got a pick. Nothing. I'm like, all right, last chance. Nothing. Walk away. Come back. It hits me. I'm like, oh, wait a second. I go, I go. I see the one girl intern. There's four guys sitting there. I go, guys, we're gonna make the girl stand. They all rise up like synchronized swimming. So I just wait in. I said I'm out on them. I haven't been this out on a group of people this fast since Meek Phil. Dave's got nothing. All right. What do you want me to say? I don't even know who the interns are. Yeah, I know. Well, they don't, you know. I'll whip them into shape. If there is a possibility. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I want you being the drill sergeant for the interns. All right. Fair enough. You, why, do, why do you think you're going to be working at Aeropostale? Because you're like, what's the, uh, don't you don't you feel like you got a job for life here, Rico? Yeah, that would. The only reason he would think that is if you don't have confidence in your own ability. I I do, but I was. Then why would you think that? I already know I can't go to Miami. Chicago's a little difficult to pick up and move. I'm seeing what's going on. I mean, I'm either running this place or I'm working at Arrow Pastel. <laughs> That's maybe what we should have done. We should have a wing of crazy dictator nut jobs running. Like it could start with Bubbly. He could add his own thing, and then he goes, and then like a uh, Rico type takes it over. It's his like uh, alien wing of Barstool run by absolute fucking psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have an open invite to Miami, though, Dave? Or? Fuck no. Yeah, see? No? That's how it goes. I know. My is disappointing. It is. No, I'm, redu I'm reducing headaches trying to in my life, not increasing. You act, but every time we're together, we have a good time. Like, you act like I'm, like, what am I doing? Waking up at 6 a.m. with, like, playing Whitney Houston? Like, I'm a decent house guest. I'm, I'm not asking for that. but it, Or, like, we go to dinner. I'm not, you know, I'm not an animal. Well, it's interesting that like every time we go well, out, it's interesting the corner, that you use my name to yeah, get tables no, without a, I mean, asking right, me, man. No problem. I don't want it in a city. I like already have gas on here using the name. I can't have like what am I? I'm not going to be able to go anywhere because they're going to be like, you already have six tables here. <laughs> six tables. I want to make sure you're spaced out. I put you in the middle. We, you know, keep you around. All right. That's where it is. All right, Rico. Thank you. All Anything right. else? Uh, yeah. Um, we're dropping the check. Me and Rona dropping the check off uh, Thursday. Um, there's a second wave coming, I believe. Can we state the? You want to state the public the the amount for the first check? Sure. One hundred and seventy one thousand dollars. That's for a the great fight job. For firefighters fund. Um, the guys that I met say that the cost of the ramps, based on what they can do, we're gonna do a ton of these. So Timmy obviously cared a lot about it. Uh, tweeted it the other night. The shirts are in. Peabody, Massachusetts. Somebody said they're in California. Like everybody kind of stepped up to buy these for a kid in Queens. Uh, it's it's going to be awesome. It's definitely going to make an impact on a lot of people's lives, people with disabilities, people who need wheelchairs. So thank you again to Dave, Erica for letting this happen. And obviously everybody who stepped up and, uh, and bought the shirts. It should be an awesome type thing. Great cause. Definitely. All right. Uh, thank you. Let Rico. me know if you guys want to do it home and home, guys. <laughs> Good to have Bosco pop in here. That was a nice conversation. I yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm not mad at him. He didn't do anything outside of not joining the fray. But um, let's talk some bird dogs. Do some listener emails, and we'll get out of here, Dave. Sure, uh, bird dogs. They are the best shorts to wear. I, they're my golf shorts. I don't know if people know that. And I actually, somebody emailed that, like, I bought bird dogs because of you, and they're the best things ever d bought. Built-in underwear, pockets that fit your phone. That's huge. Um, go to birddogs.com, enter promo code Portnoy. They'll throw in a free tumbler. That's birddogs.com, promo code Portnoy. Boom, free tumbler with your pair of bird dogs. Great for summer with bird dogs. You will not take these things off, I promise you. Bird dogs. Tumblr, that's you like that more than the whistle football? Yeah, the whistle. Although, yeah, I mean, I don't. I li I like a different type of football, even though I could have something to throw around. But yeah, Tumblr is great. Good for You're the coffee Hutch guy. Yeah, I am. Hutch. Um, all right, let's do some listener emails here. First one's from Rich. Besides Rappaport, uh, who was the worst celebrity hire? Well, who else have we hired besides him? Um, celebrities. Kaminsky, Menzel. Laduca. Who? 
Frank Kaminsky, didn't we? Roger. John uh, yeah, yeah. I there's nobody even. No, uh, some guys haven't worked. Like Manziel didn't really work. Rogier didn't work. But I mean, who cares? They didn't work. Um, you know, A Rod was there. There's no. You can't put anybody remotely in the same category. Who was the biggest celebrity that almost was hired? I really can't think of any. No. Well, if no. you do, let us know. Uh, this one's from. If you do, let us know. Yeah. Uh, this one's from Patrick. Has there been any more run-ins with the Angel of Barstool recently? No. Are you? Uh, does he reach out a lot? Are you? No. Are you on good I haven't talked to him, him in forever. Okay. I think he was in Nantucket, but or yeah. around there. Uh, next one's from Nick. If you could do more content with somebody at Barstool, who would it be? Ooh, what a question. More content with somebody at Barstool. Uh, damn, what a question. Yeah, it's a good one. You do a lot with Dan. Uh, maybe more with Kevin again, as crazy as that sounds, but the stuff we do is pretty good. We have good arguments. Then I get sick of it. I'm trying to think if there's any new people that I'd be like, oh, I, I could do good stuff with them. I mean, Whitney. Whitney. Yeah, that's a great answer. Kevin's a surprising answer. I, I get you No, it's, 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 good, it's good content when it comes yeah. out of it, and same with Whitney. Kirk mm -hmm. would be good, too, I think. Kirk, my, yeah. yeah, Kirk would be good. Biz. Uh, this one's from Tyler. Whatever happened to Dave moving to Nashville? So I was talking about doing that because, I, as we discussed earlier, my place in Miami is not done. Who knows when it will be done. Um, it, but I know it's, well, I think it's eventually going to be done and I'll be in Miami, right? Uh, so until then, in my head, I'm like, well, I know I'm going to live in Miami for uh, the foreseeable future half the year. Why don't I try to live somewhere I'm never going to live and just experience another city? That's why I thought Nashville. I had the residency. The reason I moved to Florida, established residency, taxes, all that. I had the. I, I misunderstood the rules. I thought as long as I wasn't in New York, I could kind of be anywhere. That's not true. I have to be in Miami. So that is why I did not go to Nashville. Ah, okay. And it also coincided with there was a blizzard like the day after you. Uh... Yeah, that's true. But it was more. It was more. I figured out the rules. Okay. Um, next one's from Mark here. Uh, what is the worst decision from a business perspective that you think you've made? I mean, obviously back to stool was an unmitigated disaster. You'd say that over giving up the, uh, draft Kings equity early on. Yeah. Because I still don't know how that would have shaken out. Like, I don't know how like I'm so bad at that but if I took that I would have kept getting diluted obviously I probably would have made a decent amount of money but I don't know when I could have gotten out or anything I, I don't know I don't know whether I would have made more how I did it this way or that way I don't know and it's all relative I mean that back to stool is like back breaking yes like, like we were, there was like questions of like we're fucked I thought we were going yeah. out of business at that point literally Do you have uh what was like the net loss on that it was a lot, but it, the, the, the thing with Back to Stool is coming off Stool Palooza, which we made a shit ton, relatively speaking, now doesn't seem that much, but what I didn't understand at the time is everybody was coming to see, like, it was Barstool. Like, we had Sam Adams, but it was Barstool. People were attached to Barstool, and in my head, I was like, if we get big talent, we had Mac Miller, we had Wale, Posner, I paid a shit ton, rented these huge venues. I'm like, well, if we did 3,000 people before, we'll do... 8,000 now did not work. We sold the same or less. Um, and I was caught in all these huge contracts and I thought I had to pay them in full. Like I didn't think I could cancel. I could cancel and pay like 30% and that's what I did. But if we had to pay a hundred percent on the venues, I would have been ruined. So it was like millions we're talking. No, I don't think it was that much, but we weren't making that much yet. Yeah. So hundreds of thousands, probably. maybe a million total million total, which is a shit ton at that time. What did Stool Palooza bring in? Do you remember? Probably a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more. And you only outlaid like 25. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Monster. That's a, yeah. 
that's fucked up. You're just you're thinking, oh, we'll just get bigger and bigger. It's like, oh no, actually, it's just the brand people care about. They Correct. want to see the fucking. And phone. then I rearranged that with um, the Blackout tour, which we didn't really pay much for talent. No disrespect to Dante, um, but people were coming for Barstool. And we're selling more tickets than we ever sold with almost no talent. And that was wildly lucrative until it wasn't. And then <laughs> everything could basically can't. I, like if I did the math on the blackout tour, whether we made money or lost it net, I have no idea. I think we maybe were about even when it was all said and done. W- would you agree with that, Paul? You think so? Or yeah, towards you- the end, we were, we were starting to take beatings again. Like it was, that's why we had to get out of it. And then. You know, insurance was getting so expensive and it was, yeah. Baths. Yeah. Um, this next one's from Mitch. Has YP ever reached out since uh, he left? No, I know some other people have talked to him, seen him. I've never spoken with him. He never reached out to me. If there was a chance to facilitate him appearing on the show, would you be interested in that? Yeah, I'd be fine with YP. I mean, he, he said mean things about me, but I, I don't know. I don't know what he was going through. All right, let's try to uh, let's try to do that. I'll, I'll return. I ran into him out after that because I was a big part of that like fight at the end. Uh, I, I ran into him out. He was he was fine. He was in good spirits. Didn't have any like animosity. It's weird. Point. I mean, he was such a fan, such a fan. Yeah, and his then name, your, his name was your name. His yeah, name. and then I don't. I honestly, I I see what people say. I have no idea what happened to him. And I mean that that was a big time. Life comes at you quick. I mean that whole blues cup run was yeah he blew not, up was not much longer not much before that so yeah wild uh this one's from andrew dave in honor of stranger things coming back what are your top five shows of all time it's so hard to do this right uh because are you doing comedies you doing what like the office i think it has to be one um i love game of thrones Seinfeld? Yep, Seinfeld's up there, I would say. Curb your enthusiasm early. I think it's terrible lately and has been for a while, but the early curbs are so good. Um, I fucking well, love. You talk a lot about Succession a lot. Succession's yeah. amazing. That could be in the list. Mandalorian, I love. Um,. Season one of Homelands, the perfect season. I think it's the best season of any show ever. I don't know. There's a few that I love. Succession is unbelievable. unbelievable. It is. Is it there yet, though? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do. Okay. Um, this, this one's from Heath. Um, has Barstool talked about an F1 strategy? No. No. No concern for F1. It's blowing up poly playoffs maybe we'll send him around he'll with a camera it is blowing up Mm -hmm. i think like anything if we found someone that was good at it we would be interested in it it's like hard to be like just go find something to fit in like the box and make it work it's just like maybe an idol maybe there's someone that would come idols idols i still think it's kind of niche but who knows but But it's not i'm not sitting there like oh my god we need an f1 guy but if we do find our troops or expressions for F1, that's yeah, that seems yeah, like a no-brainer. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, this next one's from Nick. What do you think about the movie Shrek? Uh, do you think it's a top five 2000s comedy? It's a weird question. Uh, I like Shrek, but no, I wouldn't say that. Very random. What if, what if I told you someone in uh, the Barstool world said that? I, I think people may be able to argue for it. I don't feel that was a cartoon. But I don't, I'm not biased against ca- cartoons. I think as a movie, I think it's possibly arguable. Well, you know, that's a lot of movies. I'm saying animated for sure, obviously. But for you comics, can argue for Shrek. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. But who said it? White Sox, Dave. I wish I knew that before. I was like, oh, you can argue for it. But yeah, no, you can. You can argue for it. <laughs> this is gonna get him going. Um. This one's from Megan. How have the sales from One Bite been since uh, the launch and where we're at now? They they started really good. I'm trying to change the recipe, so people probably have noticed I haven't pushed it as hard lately for months. I'm waiting to get a recipe that I like more than the original, but they've been good, but I want it to be better before I really start pushing it again. Would you just kind of fall out of favor of what the original I ne- was? I, 
The truth of the matter is, I feel like I was told by the pizza company that I couldn't create something the way I want to create it, and I later came, came to find out I can. So I thought it was as good as it could be. So I'm like, okay, this is as good as can be. It's frozen pizza. That's not the case. We have a better one coming. And when we do, it's something I can be proud of to tell people to go buy. Right now, if we're being honest, people buy it. I appreciate it. I love the support. I still eat it, obviously. It's not that much better or worse than other things in this price range. I think we have something far superior coming. Oh, that's big. Uh, that's a big, big news drop there. Mm -hmm. A new uh, one bite. Um, this next one's from John. Uh, why haven't there been any celebrity guests in pizza reviews lately? Cause I, I won't commit to it because I'm all over the place. So I, uh, like we do get asked, but I'm filming a lot of them in bunches. I'm out here in Montauk. I'm doing it myself as in Miami. So if someone's like, Hey, well in New York, I, I don't pencil it in because I'm not going to come. It would have to be such a spectacular guest for me to fly in to do like one pizza review. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a bucket list, one person guest that you'd be like, let's do it with that. You'd get your ass. Up yeah. To like like I mean, there's certain people like Brady Bieber or things like that. I mean, a plus 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 people. There's a guy Gervais. You love him too. Right? Yeah. Ricky Gervais. Yep. Miami. I think I would. He's in the news. I know. That? I saw that. Yeah. I love Ricky Gervais. Miley. Yeah. No. Borderline, I'd have to think about it. I asked her. I saw she was in New York when I was. I DM'd her. It said seen, but she didn't reply. Tough. Yep. Uh, last one here. Uh, Justin, can you explain why horse betting isn't more widely available on gambling apps, specifically the Barstool app? Not our choice. Stupid rules. Horse racing is antiquated, and you can't combine the paramutual with the sports gambling. We do have a horse racing app that Penn owns. Um, is it Hollywood racing or something? The app is kind of shitty, um, but that's the answer. I Trust me, I've had this conversation with Elio 20 times. He's like, why can't you do it? It's like, we can't. It legally cannot do it. We can't even offer like props for like the Kentucky Derby on the app. It's, it's illegal. I wish we could. Yeah. Um, all right then, Dave. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much everything. All right. Thanks, Dave, Paul, Kareem, everybody. Thank you for listening. That's it for today. Um, we'll right. be back next week. See you.